What's up, everyone? <clears throat> Aficio here. Uh, don't mind my face mask. You know, just washed my face this morning. Had to get some extra cleansing going because, you know, just feel the need to be extra clean. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, so I apologize deeply for the delay of this vlog. Um, lots of stuff going on right now up here in LA and unfortunately me and my team again have to go somewhere else because of very strange circumstances that I really don't want to get too deeply into right now but um yeah unfortunately we have to get out of this place to the next spot and gratefully we do have a bunch of friends that are working together like Deshaun, me, uh, my boy um, what's his name? Wow, I'm forgetting my friend's name. I'm not really a friend, aren't I? Well, anyway, Justin, a bunch of friends that I have that are also working with us on the project and things like that. And then we also have a new member on our team we just recruited. So that's a good first update. We have a new artist on our team named Isaiah. He will be in the Discord more often really soon. Um, we're just getting him familiar with the idea of the project and everything like that and how we plan to build everything out. But he is very excited for the development of this project, and he's another experienced developer, artist, 3D creator, um, who knows how to use all these different things. So, other than that, um, one of the main updates I want to make right now is that the main focus we have, again, as always, will be making sure that closed beta can get up to phase zero. So I would like to talk about phase zero and what you guys can expect from phase zero and what the point is for us to move through phases rather than timelines because timelines only put a burden on the team where we feel like we are under a time crunch, which we naturally are already as it is. So we don't need to make it any worse. So, you know, we want to make sure that deadlines aren't based off of time, but based off of objectives. Right? So this is how the phase system works for the development of the game. Right now, we are in phase zero. We're in the very, very, very beginning of the development phase of things, right? And we've gotten pretty far in the development of phase zero. Um, one of the things I would say is that most of the development for the functionality that I need in the game, I've done alone. And because of things like chat GPT, which is something you guys have probably seen me mention in the general section of uh, the Discord, uh, the chat GPT is actually capable of helping us create blueprints in Unreal Engine and create more code for Unreal Engine that allows us to do things in Unreal Engine that we couldn't have done before or figured out by ourselves as easily as we can with chat GPT or GPT-3. Now, that being said, we have a lot of things to look forward to there. And um, because of that, uh, you know, Things are really interesting. We may not need anywhere near the size of team that I thought we might initially need because of the power of AI. The power of AI is truly giving individual people the power to do what 10 people could in a certain field, like game development. Because of AI, I'm capable of coming up with tons of new concepts for the game very rapidly. And one would argue that the AI is the one creating the art. Mm, that's. See, the thing that I would like to state right now is that AI is just a tool to help us create art. The, the AI isn't creating anything by itself. It's just not running off of its own program. That program is what we put into it, right? Yes, some people can make the argument that the AI is using art from all over the internet to influence itself and learn how to build these things, right? Cool, but the same thing that humans do we go around the world taking art from other artists, taking inspiration from all these different people and finding a way to make it our own. You know what I mean? Is there anyone who can truly say because of all the different people doing anime, they're stealing their anime style like the first person to ever draw anime? You know, the first person to ever draw Memento Mori art. You know, a lot of people know about Billy Ellis, but he didn't, that's not his original, that's not something that's originally his style. That's been done for years. You know what I mean? So you can go ahead and say that the AI is stealing art, which in some sense it may be true sometimes depending on the people using these prompts. And that's another thing. It's not the AI. It's the people putting in the prompts. So if the person putting in the prompt is actively trying to recreate a piece you already made, that's more close to plagiarism than theft than anything else. But if the person wants to use your style 
because they're inspired by you. That's the same thing as if they were to draw the piece by themselves and work to achieve your style through their own work. And yes, in a sense, that's, some people frown upon that, but this is how art evolves, is because we are inspired by others and we find ways to take their techniques and make it our own. We can't be as selfish as we are. A lot of you are really selfish and really like have this idea that all of this energy you're creating in this universe strictly should belong to you. All this knowledge that you're creating should be yours and yours only. And, you know, that's some creepy shit because you're not working together as a whole to help yourself evolve. And yeah, either way, that's aside from the topic for gaming. I just wanted to bring that up for the AI side of things because I personally don't like the whole argument that AI is is stealing <clears throat> from artists and things like that as much as people think it is. No, it's people that steal from artists. It's not the AI. The AI is just a tool. If somebody chooses to use the AI to steal from you, that's the person. It's not the AI's fault. Yes, the AI does make it easy for these people to do things like that, but at the end of the day, that persecution shouldn't be put onto a tool that can also be used to help me develop an entire video game damn near by myself. So those are things I'd like to think about and focus on uh, when it comes down to the AI and things like that. Other than that, guys, um, one of the other things that I'd like to update you about is that we, we have a lot of strong access to AI technology and things like that now. So we'll be using that a lot to create different concepts, different updates, different functionality, and you will be seeing some form of AI in the Discord soon where our new bot is going to be incorporated with that, and it's going to make it possible for you to chat with the bot, and we program this bot to understand the game's lore and things in that realm. And you'll be able to learn about the game's lore and everything just by talking to this bot and stuff like that, and even explore the game's like you know mythos and whatnot through this AI as you're in the Discord while we're building the structure of the game in the future. So still, the closed beta, we're working on it very rapidly. We just have to, you know, get ourselves situated, unfortunately, again. And uh, once we do that, um, you know, we'll be able to sit down with uh, Isaiah, Deshaun, and I and really hammer out all the different things we need in Unreal Engine that need to get, you know, sorted out. And the cool thing is because, again, like I said before, AI is capable of allowing us the ability to um, basically, uh, it's allowing us the ability to um, just create blueprints on command based off of what I'm thinking. Like if I want to be able to switch from third person to first person a certain way using certain functions and things like that or whatever, I can make this AI do exactly that. And it may not be perfect in the beginning, but it learns from its mistakes. If you point out its mistakes and say, well, this part of the code isn't working, could you fix this? And it will find solutions to fix that exact part of the code and see why it could be wrong. And this is something that we've been testing and have been coming up with very unique um, blender uh, shaders that we haven't been able to figure out by ourselves. Like, I don't wanna tell, tell them yet because this is where the AI is helping us create unique proprietary knowledge based off of how we think. And this is where it comes down to where we're, we're stepping into an age of where your thoughts and your unique perspective and your imagination is going to become one of the most valuable things in the future is because what you think and what you see and how you envision things is what you're going to be building with through this AI. So the greater your vision is, the, the more powerful your mind is, the more able the more able you are to be creative with this technology on every scale, coding, art, whatever it is, like creating better business structures, economic systems, um, you know, accounting systems and all these different things that AI is capable of doing for you now. Because of that, you know, humanity is is <sighs> I can't, I can't express how, how powerful this stuff is, man. Like, you know, we as a company in El Animus Regnum, we're taking great advantage of this. AI for me is definitely one of those things that right now has evolved to a point and is evolving to a point where it will make it possible for me to make a game this complex with a team of less than 13 people. In the next five years, AI is going to make it possible for people like me to make these games completely by myself, potentially. And that's 
that's a massive thing because it takes years to get concepts together for some people it takes years to get like all these different things together that take us just just creative blockages and all these different things i don't deal with as much anymore purely because of the fact that ai is able to help me come up with other ideas and this is the thing i look at ai as more of an extension of self we are human as humanity we create these things and we make them a part of us you know what i mean and it's definitely something that i genuinely just want to build with as quickly as possible because if you don't use ai now especially as a company or even as an individual working in the tech field if you're not using ai you're about to be left behind you're about to be left behind seriously so make sure all of you who are listening to this and watching this take time to learn how to use ai for your field of work seriously like don't don't waste your time with the whole hater mentality that ai is stealing jobs just that and the third it's bound to happen you can't do anything to stop that it's going to it's going to be created because for companies it's more efficient and it's smarter but the thing is what it's going to do for you as a worker an individual person who's capable of working in these fields still it'll make you 10 times more productive for your company because the ai still needs individuals to function it so instead of you functioning all those small menial tasks that you're getting paid damn near nothing for anyway, you're capable of maintaining multiple structures of work because the AI is assisting you to do so, making it possible for even people who don't have the intelligence to do high, like, high, like, uh, what is it? Uh, basically, like, you're using your own mental computing power. You know what I mean? Like, the more, the more cognitive, like, you know, power you have to use the more like cognitive energy you have to use you know it just makes life harder trust me and anyone who sits behind a computer all day knows what i'm talking about because that's cognitive energy you're sitting there and you're using your head to type away all these different codes and numbers and accountants and all you people who are dealing with that kind of stuff ai is going to remove that stress for you you're going to tell it to do a certain thing for you and it's just going to do it and people i'm sure many of you have already seen examples so definitely take the time to find a way for your field that you can use this ai and build something because it's something that you know it really will change your life like i promise you because i'm already seeing again like I, I know this is not like i'm trying i'm trying not to go off on a rant about ai this update but because of how much i love it you know it's just Sorry, I'm over here playing on my face, trying to keep my mask on, you know what I mean? But yeah, I love AI, as you guys can tell. It's amazing. It's powerful. It's just, of course it's dangerous. Anything, any tool is dangerous. Like, you know, that's another problem with humanity we have is that we tend to fear things we don't understand. But any tool is dangerous, period. Even if guns were removed from the planet, it wouldn't remove the evil from the planet. People will still find a way to hurt each other purely because of the fact that they have those intentions in the first place. Just because you remove guns from a location doesn't remove crime. It just makes it harder for crime to happen with most people. But it, the thing is a criminal will still get their hands on that weapon one way or another because they don't care. Especially in an age where you can 3D print weapons and things like that. So again, tools, are not the problem. What's the problem lies within here and here. Your mind and your heart, how you work as an individual is extremely important for you to understand if you're gonna be dealing with these technologies. And that's one of the things in this game, I will say is going to be tested very greatly through our stories and our experiences, is that our focus is to make sure that you are being tested in many different ways to see how you respond to certain situations. And keep in mind, there's no going back in animus regnum once you do something that's just that decision affects your game's future forever you cannot go back so make sure you guys when you start playing this game especially because of the fact that we're trading crypto for all in-game assets and everything like that you guys need to make sure you're taking your making your decisions wisely because it could cost you everything in the game and the only thing that you'll be able to do about that is deal with it in the game and earn it back in the game. You're not going to be able to come and complain to us because you made a stupid decision. You didn't know what you were doing. That's the lesson of life. 
life happens like that all the time where we make stupid mistakes and we have to learn from our mistakes and that's one of the main things that I'm really looking forward to in this game is people learning from their mistakes because it, it actually you know is affecting them more than just it being a game you know what I mean so other than that another thing I'd like to talk about for the updates of everything is the fact that right now besides me having to relocate ourselves again unfortunately we're going to be staying in LA right now we have a lot of different concept ideas that we're going to build on and work with we are very close to getting all the different races kind of figured out on how we want them to look for the most part there's only a few more we need to do for the main mint and then from there we have to design the artifacts we have a lot of those already figured out and how we're going to do those all the concepts are pretty much worked out so the free mint is pretty much almost ready to be finalized the smart contracts are being built right now um, and we are currently migrating again like i said we're currently migrating um what's it called uh, all of our mints over to polygon so any of the mints that we have right now is going to be migrated over to polygon so um i might be able to create these smart contracts myself now with the uh, gpt now that i think about it um yeah so i'll have uh, my people audit these contracts just to make sure they work but if i'm capable of writing contracts by myself with gpt and stuff like that man you guys don't understand how quickly i'm about to move through this system now i feel like i have more than just the power <laughs> I'm on some Tony Stark, you know what I mean? But still, oh my God, this face mask is like trying so hard to stay on my face, but it's failing. But yeah, I don't know if I have much more to tell you guys other than, you know, I love you. I appreciate you all. And you know, this again means everything to me. I will never stop for fucking pushing to make this game a reality. Even if I have to make it myself, it's gonna happen. I do truly know that this game is going to change everything for all of us and we need things like this to make life a lot easier. You know what I mean? So I appreciate you guys. I'm looking forward to the next update and the next AMA. We will be holding the AMA tomorrow. Um, that way you guys can come in and ask any questions. It's gonna be a short AMA because we just did another one on Sunday. Um, I think it was Monday, I'm not sure. Um, time's like elusive right now for us. I'm sorry, but, um, yeah, really appreciate you all. See you tomorrow at the AMA and, uh, definitely take some time to get ready for the upcoming mints. Oh, also I'll be listing those concept designs today for you guys. So you can get your hands on those and, uh, I'll be putting them up on, um, this website that I'll be sharing in the discord. Uh, it's called uh, exchange.art and there's Solana NFTs. The reason why we're using Solana because we just want to experiment with the different chains and stuff like that because Defungify is a multi-chain network. So we're going to see how we can incorporate these concept pieces from Solana into the game and, Im Im and implement the multi-chain functionality that they can take into account. But that's not going to be till way later. And either way, these concepts are concept art anyway. They're not going to actually have some real function in the game. Maybe the only thing they do if you own the concept art is give you like a unique shop access or something like that in the game. So they might have some form of utility in the game later. But I'm not going to make any promises just yet on what those functions or utilities are for the end game. Other than that, um, the concept art will definitely be dope. You know what I mean? Because they're going to be characters and species and things like that in the game later. Uh, even weapons, starships, and things like that are going to be concepts we put out there. Um, and uh, yeah, so <clears throat> you'll be able to get your hands on those. Hopefully, I'll have that up and every, everything running by today. But I got a few things I have to deal with out here in L.A. since we have to relocate again. But um, other than that, I appreciate you guys. Uh, I have the NFTs listed on the secondary marketplace for the Apertus Fera, so grab those before the migration, and you will be getting some special upgrades and nice little updates. Um, and I know those people who have been boosting the server, you're, you've been promised rewards and stuff like that. And also the adamant meta rewards, they're finally giving those over to me, the list of people who bought those rewards for this game and our discord. So we're going to be giving out those rewards shortly. I just need to wait for them to send me that over today. And then, yeah, that's pretty much 
it. You know what I mean? We got the concept art available soon. And then also we have a quest available on Adamant Meta's quest network, where if you buy one of our NFTs off the secondary market via purchase Fera, you get 500 points for owning that NFT. So even if you already own in a purchase Fera, you can go over and claim that 500 points. So do that and make sure you get your extra points. We're going to be adding more things to the point system in the future in the reward system as we gain more capital what we'll do is we'll be adding things like you know merch and stuff you guys can redeem and all that cool stuff uh and then once the game is like fully running and stuff like not fully running but running more efficiently and things like that we may have the ability for you to like redeem like gold in-game gold um in-game like resources like you know some rare wood or so anything like a bunch of items in the game that you need later to do other things that are useful so just stick with us we have tons of great ideas tons of great rewards uh opportunities and you know we will be hosting a few giveaways soon um but you know our main focus right now is just getting everything sorted out and together so that way we can get situated and stay keep our heads in the in the machine a little bit to make the game but uh other than that uh yeah guys cop some nfts from us we're gonna just keep building up value and if you understand how value works in a space you know the level of utility is what makes something valuable and as you can see there's multiple uses of utility for a lot of these assets in game so i'll talk to you guys later don't forget to check up on your lore. If you haven't been reading the lore in the Cosmic Guide or listening to the to the audio logs, you should definitely check them out. Some of them are going to be updated a little bit. They're not going to be too much different from what you're already hearing, though. So take some time to listen to that, guys. Much love. I appreciate you all. I got to get out of here. And, you know, I think I got to get this mask off my face pretty soon. You know what I mean? Just like, you know, it's starting to get a little dry. You know, a little what the what. All right, folks, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.